this last couple of years has just been wild, hasn't it? Um, the pandemic has left many of us feeling isolated, a little scared, trying to figure out whether or not we're going to make a difference. There have been a lot of calls for us to make a difference, right, to get out there and do something. But what if we don't know what to do? What if we don't know how to enter? What if we don't know how to make a difference? My name's Marina Barnett. I'm an associate professor at Widener University. And I'd like to share with you my mom's recipe for community organizing. It begins with a story, my favorite story as a child, Stone Soup by Marsha Brown. Once upon a time, there was a famine across the land. The people in one small village didn't have enough to eat. Uh, they were afraid their families would go hungry, so they hid the food that they did have from their friends and their neighbors. One day, a wandering soldier came into the village. He asked the different people that he met where he could get something to eat or sleep, and they said, look, there is nothing here. You need to move on. And he said, well, you know, I have everything that I need. In fact, I'd like to make some stone soup and let everybody enjoy it. He pulled a big black pot out of his wagon, put it down. He poured some water in it. He lit a fire under it. And then, as everybody watched, he took a plain gray stone out of his pocket and he put it in the pot. As the soldier sniffed the stone soup and licked his lips, the villagers began to overcome their lack of trust. Ah, the soldier said to himself, I do like a tasty stone soup. But you know what would be even better? Stone soup with cabbage. Now that's good eating. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, one of the villagers ran back to his house and came back and he handed the soldier a cabbage and said, I found this cabbage. I have this cabbage that you can use. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. The soldier cut up the cabbage, put it in the soup. Ah, he sniffed it and it smelled good. What? I had stone soup with a bit of beef, and it was delicious. Ha. Well, the butcher said, I think I might be able to find some scraps. And so he ran off, and he found some scraps. And while he was looking for scraps, other members of the village said, well, you know, I have some potatoes. I have some onions. I have some carrots. Before you knew it, the pot was overflowing. It smelled good. And true to his word, the soldier shared the soup with all of the villagers. That night, they had a tremendous feast. Now, of course, he also had a good place to sleep. And everybody wanted to ask him about that stone. They wanted to buy that stone from him. No, that's OK. I'll keep it. He put it back in his pocket. And in the morning, he went about his way. My mom, Geneva Barnett, was a master when it came to stone soup. <laughs> uh, everything that I learned, I learned from her. Uh, often, if she was made aware of a problem, if something broke at the church or somebody needed something, she would declare, I'm going to have a banquet, and I'm going to invite everybody to the banquet. Now, when things got broke, a lot of times people felt like they didn't have the money to fix it, right? A boiler cost a lot of money, or a heater, or an air conditioner. These things cost money. But she'd get on the phone, and uh, <laughs> it went a little like this. This is my mom. Now, young people, this is the 1974 <laughs> version of a phone. <laughs> and we had the slimline princess phone with the 74-inch cord that you had to keep shaking because it kept getting all twisted up. 
And my mom would get on the phone and she'd say, Mary. She never said hi, she just said your name. And you knew something was coming. Mary, I'm going to have a banquet down at the church next week. Girl, you know I'm going to have some of my good old pies. What do you like? What do you like? I'll make sure I set something aside for you. And before she hung up, she would slip in there. Oh, yeah, and Mary, do me a favor. You know that sweet potato pie that you know that I love of yours? Why don't you bring some of that? And she would do that again and again. And all throughout the week, potato salad, coleslaw, chicken, everybody brought something. Now, the thing about my mom is that she knew everybody. And so before we knew it, there would be 100 people at that event. Everybody with their best offering, their favorite thing, the thing that they could exchange with her for just a piece of one of her pies. They'd come together, they'd laugh, they'd joke. There was always singing. My mom was an amazing singer. And in the end, when it was all over and everybody was satiated, she would take up collection. And everything that she collected would go to the church to fix the boiler, to pay for whatever needed to be paid for, to help somebody to pay for a funeral or a hospital visit, always to take care of somebody in need. My mom knew what stone soup was. She didn't have enough money herself to fix whatever needed to be done or what was broken or couldn't be paid, but she knew that if she just gathered her friends together, they could make a way out of no way. I witnessed her power to unite people countless times as she raised money for the sick or helped somebody pay for funeral expenses. My mom's recipe for stone soup is three simple ingredients. Relationships. You have to know the people in your community. Resources. You gotta find out what they do best. And then finally, reciprocity. You have to be willing to share what you have with others. These ingredients are the trinity, the mirepoix, if you have it, the foundation of any good movement. Relationships brings us together, helps us know that we're part of something bigger. All around the country, there are these community folks that come out. When, when violence hits, they come out and they talk to folks. So if something happens in a neighborhood, if somebody gets shot or somebody gets stabbed or if there's a big fight, we call these folks out and they're called credible messengers. These are simply neighbors armed with the love of their community, a knowledge of the people who live there, and they understand the young people. So they can talk to them in a way that most of us can't. They interrupt the spread of violence simply with interacting with people, holding their hands, talking to them, having conversation with them. These people know the power of stone soup. The next ingredient is a knowledge of resources. The best organizers know that individuals have talents and strengths. They know the assets and the resources that are in that neighborhood. They assume that something is there before they get there. And that's something you need to know, young people. Don't think that there's nothing there. You join a movement. As a child, it seemed like my mom knew everybody in our town. But she also knew what was special about them. And she'd assemble people and encourage them to use their skills to address the problems that the community had things that impacted them collectively. When she brought people together, there was an expectation that you would bring your best. Everyone had something to give, time or talent. And every gift was equally valued. In 2019, before the pandemic, a good friend of mine, Joe Purnell, a community organizer in Southwest, gave me a call and he said, Marina, I'd like to have a health fair. 
he was really concerned about the health of the people that lived in his community, and he wanted to bring the resources in so that they knew that they could go and get help when they needed it. In two months, Joe was able to accomplish what most people would have taken two years to put together because Joe knew the people in the community. See, he had worked with everybody. He could call the politicians. Why? Because he had worked with the politician's father back in the day. He could get shirts printed the next day. Why? Because he knew those brothers that print those shirts. He helped to raise them. Those were the folks that he talked to that were on the corner, the folks that he encouraged. And so when Joe comes knocking, everybody answers. We had an amazing event that year. There were hundreds of people that came out. There were children and families and neighbors, health providers, politicians, business people, all there at the call from one person. Joe knew the power of stone soup. He knew the resources in his community. And when the pandemic struck six months later, he was able to reactivate those same resources. Nothing is ever wasted, right? Things come back. Those same resources were reactivated to make sure that people were tested, to make sure that people got the vaccine, to make sure people got the health care that they needed, all because he understood the power of stone soup. The final ingredient is reciprocity. As children, we were taught to whom much is given, much is required. So the gifts that you have, they're not yours. They're for the betterment of your community. They're to help other people. People knew that they could always count on my mother. They knew that if they called her, she would use her gifts, her abilities, her skills, her talents to help them because she believed that by working together, many hands could make the work light, pennies could become dollars, and their goal would be achieved. One of the best things about my mom, oh, she was a rascal. She, she just had this um, inner light about her. She was fun. She practiced something called vicarious joy. Now I know over the past couple of years, we've heard a lot about other kinds of vicarious interaction. But my mom was about sharing the good news. She loved when people came to her and told her good stories that she could carry to someone else to make somebody else's day better. She was a great storyteller. She laughed a lot. And when you left her, you always felt better than when you first came. So what does all this have to do with community organizing, you might ask? When the pandemic struck, I realized how much of her lived in me. When we were forced inside, and it looked like everything was taken from us, I heard her voice in my head. Marina, make do with what you have. My mom was a social constructionist before the term actually came about. She believed that how you saw the problem was the problem. And so make do with what you have was important. It reminds me of one of my favorite quotes uh, from Theodore Roosevelt. Do your best with what you have where you are. So when the pandemic struck, I just went about doing what I had been taught to do my entire life. See, my mom was a catalyst. She made things happen. Me, I'm a facilitator. When something happens, when a problem needs to be solved, I make stone soup simply by calling on the relationships that I have, activating resources, and getting people to work together to achieve a common goal. In community organizing, we call this building coalitions and activating resources. We leverage what we have, 
We share what we have to make things better. With relationships, resources, and reciprocity, we can build a movement. So here's what I want you to know. Here's my big brainstorm. You, you can work to end seemingly intractable problems of poverty, hunger, loneliness, vulnerability, violence in your community with nothing but the shirt on your back and the wit of your mind. It doesn't take anything else. You have everything that you need already to make a difference. We can make our community safer, cleaner, healthier by banding together and using relational tactics. We can change our environments by stepping back out into the world, joining others, and being willing to share our talents. We're wired for this. Think of the number of teachers who pulled together learning hubs for kids to make sure that they couldn't fall behind during the pandemic. Think of the churches that opened their doors to make sure that people had food and toiletries. Think of the doctors and nurses that worked all week and then came out on the weekend to test people and make sure that they were vaccinated. Think of the musicians who went out on their stoops and played and sang for their neighbors. And thankfully, those yoga and exercise instructors <laughs> that created online classes so that we could keep our sanity. We shopped for our neighbors who couldn't go out for themselves. We looked after each other and we did what we needed to do to make sure that we all made it through. We shared our gifts with the world. So what about you? What's your stone? What can you bring to the table? What are your strengths? How can you bring others together to make a difference? Making a difference simply starts with understanding what your gifts are. Finding others and asking, how can I help you? With a simple gesture of introducing yourself and starting a conversation, you can begin your own movement. So find that thing in yourself, that strength, that stone, and share it with others. If the last few years has taught us anything, it's that we need each other. This coming together, this is who we are. So go outside, meet your neighbors, and get cooking. <laughs> Thank you.